Hi, this is Bill from Title Town Drones. I have the FLIR View Pro uh, this evening and I'm going to be talking about uh, some of the configuration and setup. So let's first start with the camera. The camera requires a 5 volt input. This is very important. Don't put any more voltage into the camera than what it wants. 5 volts. So you're going to need probably a regulated power source. The accessory uh, cable that's provided is designed just to plug into a USB, which is fine, but uh, we're going to be installing this on an um, unmanned aircraft and we want to give it 5 volts. Uh, of course, we're going to be using a different battery. Alright, so what we have here is a, a video transmitter, we have a voltage regulator, and then we have a radio receiver that is being operated through this Tyrannus uh, remote control here. So this cable right here is a data cable that you have to buy as an extra accessory. Uh, these are typically called GoPro 3 Hero uh, cables. They have a video and a power output on them. So I've had to splice this one, but when you get them, they'll have just the regular servo connectors on them that look like that, sort of that, uh, that three-prong uh, connector. So the video is the yellow and black. It's looking for video on these two leads right here. So the th third one in, I think, is the video, and then the second one in is the ground. So we want the video and the ground to hit those two pins. All right. And then we're also powering the video transmitter with its own power source. So let's start here with the power, and then we'll follow it through. So this is a three cell LiPo, and this is producing 11.1 .1 or greater voltage. So we have the power coming out, and then we're splitting the power. Uh, two leads are going directly into the video transmitter. Why? Because the Immersion RC video transmitter is capable of handling higher voltage. It must have its own voltage regulator built in. So we can, put, we can go ahead and put unregulated voltage right into the Immersion RC transmitter. Then we also have created sort of a splice here that goes off to the input of the voltage regulator. So we're putting 11.1 volts in here and out this side we're getting 5 out. So now we have 5 volts coming out Okay, and then we've got another splice here. So one uh, part of the splice is the power to the that accessory cable I told you about. So we have the red and black leads coming out and feeding this little USB connector here. So that's five, five volts in right there. Then the other part of the splice here, the other five volt output is heading over here to this uh, receiver, which is the remote control for the accessories. So we'll talk about those in just a minute. Now the next thing we've got going on is this uh, accessory cable, which is a accessory cable that is included with the FlareView Pro, and it is designed to let you plug into uh, a receiver or a device like a um, a flight controller, for example, like a Pixhawk, and you can pull the signal out of there to control the camera. So, how do we know what the camera is going to do if we send a signal to this receiver. That's why we have the app, and the app is where we designate uh, the functions. So in this case, I've gone in and I've selected what I want those channels to do. So PWM4 is going to change the color palettes. So what I've done here is I've taken this switch and programmed the Tyrannus radio so that when this switch is activated, it'll change the color palettes between black hot, white hot, and then the fusion, which is the other choice. There's there's a half a dozen choices for these color palettes. Those are the three um, that I've chosen. Then I've got another switch here programmed to talk to one of these channels here. And this switch here is uh, meant to trigger the record start and stop right there. I also have an uh, option for uh, PWM 1 and 2 
um, without getting too detailed this accessory cable really is designed for the Pixhawk and it was supposed to plug in there but if you wanted to cut that end off and put a connector on there and plug it in there then you could you could use this as, as well if you wanted to add another function to your camera <clears throat> all right so um, what we've got now is the ability to um, trigger the camera uh, start and stop the recording by flipping a switch and you've heard the double beep, which is an audible indicator that the recording has started. And I'll flip this back. Three beeps indicates that it's stopped. Unfortunately, I don't get any sort of a indicator up here on the display if uh, it's stopped or started. I'll just have to rely on that. This, this screen here, this is a portable battery powered screen or um, receiver, I should say, diversity receiver and uh, this uh, could be mounted either on a tripod or you can get a mount mounted on the radio. So the end game here is to take all these goodies and tuck them into this nice 3D printed little container. And that 3D printed container will then mount on the back of this Inspire One. And then what we've done then is we've added thermal capabilities to an Inspire One without uh, affecting the existing onboard camera. That is the process of connecting the FLIR View Pro to a video transmitter and also to remotely control it to stop and start and to select your color palettes. So thanks for watching, have a great day.